Jace, it's a very important week this week. What is this week? A little golf tournament called the U.S. Open. U.S. Open week is here, folks. I know a lot of you at home share the same sort of excitement that I do because it's major time. And I got to tell you, it's pretty hard not to take Scotty Scheffler at this point. Scotty just picked up his fifth victory of the year before the U.S. Open. I think there's been some people that have done that in the past. I think the last person was Tom Watson. Well... We're not going to be focusing in on Scotty's golf swing this week because we've already done that a bunch this year. We are going to be focusing in on somebody that's very, very good at swinging the golf club and just picked up his second victory in a row on the Champions Tour, Ernie Els. Ernie Els. The Big Easy is back. And his golf swing, I'm just going to say it right now, is one of the best golf swings that we've ever seen in the history of golf. Not just because of the way that it looks, but because he's also produced a golf swing that has never left him on the sidelines from injury. Never. Not one. What was his injury from? Sailboating. Sailboating. His only injury during his professional golfing career, and it's been a long one, is from sailboating. But there's a reason why his golf swing is so good outside of the fact that it produces lots of speed and looks so elegant. is because he moves in a way that is really tied to his DNA. He's got really good tempo, and his tempo is surrounding the sequence of movements that, that takes place in the golf swing. Most of you at home battle with tempo, and we know that there's certain tempos that we can actually see now. We know that three to one is the optimal ratio, but what is the best tempo for you? That's the question I want you to start putting in your head. Now, I got some good news for you. Later on in the week, Jason and I are gonna be heading out onto the range. That's right. That's right. And we're gonna be teaching you a drill that's gonna actually train you with the exact opposite arm that we're gonna be focusing in on here today. We're gonna to be training your trail arm, the troublemaker, your trail wrist, your trail arm, your trail shoulder, how it should function in the downswing so that you set yourself up for a better delivery. So you set yourself up for better swing plane and path so that you stop flipping and scooping the golf club and you can start playing better golf. So hopefully you guys are ready to take this ride with us. Let's head inside the lab. Let's take a look at this golf swing from beginning to end and show you the highlight reel that it really is. Oh yeah, do me a big favor. If you were just joining us on the channel, it's really good for us if you head down below, take a few minutes of your day and just subscribe and hit that bell notification and also leave us some thumbs up. And if you have any questions or comments, post that up below. Post up your predictions for the US Open. Jason and I are taking Scotty, we'll give you guys the field. I know his golf swing looks really slow, but one of the things that you have to understand is that he's actually moving very quickly in the golf swing. He's just moving in a very specific order that allows this golf swing to look as smooth as it does. But one of the things that I like most about this golf swing is the thought that he uses in his downswing to get things moving onto his lead side. Let's listen in. So I'm playing a lot of pro -ams and people ask me, what do you think at the change of direction? You know, from your back swing, top of your back swing, to start of your downswing. And I um, always try and feel that I'm, you know, I've made my full turn, get my shoulder behind the ball. And from here, it feels like my left arm and the shaft is just dropping. It's just falling down to the, to the floor. So did you hear that? He's, he talks about his lead arm and the shaft dropping from the top of the swing as he's starting to shift left. He's not trying to create any sort of big active movement. Now, if you've been following this stuff here at My Golf DNA at all, you understand that I like to break the golf swing down into threes. And one of the analogies that I like to use from a face-on perspective is the speed zones, right? We have up here at the top in this big red section is what we consider your slow zone. In the midsection from about chest height down to your belt line is what we call our acceleration zone. This is where the hands and arms are going to start really picking up the pace and they're going to reach peak speed. And then as the hands and arms start to work down in front of the trail thigh, everything's going to start to slow down and the club is going to go its fastest. That's how we transfer speed through the bottom of the swing arc. And so what I want you to remember is, is that it's very important for you to make sure that you're patient in that transitional phase. I know a lot of golf instruction is really trying to push you to start shifting over to your lead side really quickly. Lead arm gets parallel to the ground, start moving to your lead side. I think that's a really bad bit of information for a lot of you at home because a lot of you at home are not the spry kitty cats that you like, uh, that you used to be. You need to be able to move your body in space and be able to create the proper load and be able to move with that load in the correct order on the way down. If you start trying to shortchange yourself with your weight shift over to your lead side, it's gonna be nearly impossible for you to be able to create the rotation and width that you need to be able to produce your club at speed. And so when you watch Ernie here, as he loads into his trail side, I want you to watch how patient he is to let the backswing fully complete. So if you look, you're gonna see him shift over to his trail side. He stays in that trail leg. He's turning into his right hip. Body turn is nearly to 90 degrees. He's still on his trail leg. Now this is where pressure is gonna to start to move off of the trail side because the right hip is rotated fully back into depth and the club is starting to work in the direction of the target. 
And so now you're going to see that he's going to start moving left. It's well above that lead arm parallel to the ground. And so as he starts to make that move left, that lead arm starts to drop down, shaft starts to drop down, and now the hands are going to go really fast. But what makes the hands go fast in this section of the golf swing? Well, the hips. The hips are going to be driving this, this movement. The hips are accelerating the hands and the arms. That's exactly what we just worked on in the slingshot drill. Remember, you're not a contortionist. If you are, well, congratulations to you. But what I want you to remember is, is that the hips are going to accelerate fast through this section of the swing. They're going to open up to about 45 degrees, and that is propelling the hands and arms down into the release portion of the swing. And we're going to be able to see that pretty closely here from a down-the-line perspective. Looking at it from a down-the-line perspective, one of the things that I love about this swing is how he moves into his right hip and keeps the arms out in front of him as much as possible. So the hips become really stable as he starts to finish off the backswing. Hands and arms are in a really good spot there at the top. And then as he starts to shift over to his lead side, the lead arm and the shaft start to drop down. And look at this position right here when he hits the slot. Look at how much his hips have opened. His hands and his arms have been accelerated really fast through here by his legs and his hip. By getting those hips open like that before the release starts to commence, we know that he's producing max efficiency. We know that he's being patient with the release of the golf club so that he's not running into this environment where he could be flippy and scoopy. So the big key is understanding that when you start to move over to your lead side is very player dependent. I don't want you starting to shift over to your lead side just because your lead arm hit parallel to the ground. You should be shifting over to your lead side when you get fully loaded into your trail leg and you get fully turned. Don't worry about where your hands and your arms and your golf club are. Get your body to be the primary engine of the golf swing. Your hands and your arms and the, the variables that exist around your hands and your arms, as far as elevation is concerned, is considered a variable. How much you lift your hands, how much you flex your right arm, what your wrists are doing is all very player dependent. But what you can have is your body moving in the correct sequence and allow your arms to respond to that. And if you learn how to get your hips and your arms to work properly in that downswing sequence, you're going to be able to produce a lot more speed without having to work hard. Effortless power is what it's all about, but doing it the safest way possible is what we teach you here at My Golf DNA. And we're going to bring that to you this week later on when we start teaching you this right arm downswing drill because a lot of you need to train your trail arm what it should be doing so that you stop screwing up the party and start playing better golf. We'll see you guys in the next video.